talking today about the inversion of control principle and the dependency injection design pattern, how we can apply it in the .NET. So I created here a class employee, which has a dependency on another class, salary calculator. So in this case, a a high level module is depending on a low level module which is the salary calculator why it is a low level module because it is uh, it is considered a functionality that is used in the bigger class which is the class employee so whenever a high level module class is depending on a low level module class so they do not, uh, the code here doesn't respect the inversion of control principle. The inversion of control principle states that high level modules should not depend on low level modules. They should depend on abstractions. So what can we do here? We go to the class salary calculator. We cre create, we, we have to make the class employee depend on an abstraction of the class salary calculator. So we create an interface which is called, which you can call it I salary calculator. It needs to be a public interface so we can use another, the other class and it has the, the method which is the get salary. And we have to make the class salary calculator implement the interface I salary calculator. So, and in the class employee, we have to change it and inject the service in the constructor. For example, there are many ways to inject the services. There are the property injections and there are constructor injections. Here we'll be using the constructor injection. So inject the I salary calculator in the constructor and we have to make it a property. Okay, we make a property. It's called I salary calculator. Okay, and now in the method get salary, we just use the implementation of the I salary calculator. Now, in the main program, what we have to do, so we have to make the implementation of the interface I salary calculator, like now, yes, salary calculator equals new. Standard calculator, and we uh, put uh, our rate, for example, as we change implementation now. <clears throat> we can call, uh, we can go to the class constructor, the employee, it doesn't have a constructor, okay. And now, employee M, we inject, we have to inject the salary calculator. Now we can call the method get salary in this way. So the employee, class employee is not depending on the, uh, the implementation itself. So let's consider uh, we have another implementation of the salary calculator. For example, uh, another class add new item we go to class Ooh, let's say it's a promoted salary calculator promoted and it has another implementation of the method get salary so class 
which implements the interface I salary calculator and so if it uh, implements the interface I salary calculator it needs to, to have the method get salary public double get salary um, here for example I'll uh, make it return static number which is 1500 so whenever we call uh, the salary calculator promoted and we call the method get salary, it returns the 1500 number. So uh, when we go back to the main, to the main, if we call the first one, it will get it will give the first salary. Now if you inject the second salary calculator, which is salary calculator promoted, um, it doesn't it, it doesn't have Nothing in the constructor as parameters. Okay, so P at SP and we call it so it returns the static number. In this way, the salary employee can use uh, those different implementations which was not possible in the first uh, way of writing the code. So now we'll be talking about the IOC containers, the inversion control containers. So the container must know which dependency to instantiate when it counters a particular type. It has to resolve the dependencies for example, here we can we can say that whenever you um, face the I salary calculator interface, you need to to use the second implementation, which is the salary calculator promoter. This is the job of the IOC containers, the dependency injection containers. In the .NET core, there is an extension with a built-in dependency injection. Uh, container which is Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. We add it from the Nugget Package Manager. So manage Nugget Packages and we add it from here. We write, we type Microsoft, we search for it and we install it. Now let's use it. Let's use this uh, dependency injection container. For example, uh, here we'll, we'll be talking about services. Now, um, the services are the classes that to be injected in the dependencies. We need to make a service collection and a service provider and build the service provider and make the container resolve the dependencies. For example, create here the service collection and we add to the service collection the I salary calculator and I tell him whenever you face the I salary calculator interface you have to implement the salary calculator promoted implementation. Now we may, we add to the service collection the service in a singleton scope we have uh, three types of scopes. Scopes means the lifetime of uh, the service. So uh, the container manages the lifetime of the services. We have three types. We have the singleton, as we, sa as we saw. We have the scope. And we have the transient. Transient. So, the singleton means that one instance is created in along the application lifetime and it will be shared across the applications. So just one instance of the salary cal calculator and it, it's shared in the application. The scope service means that 
Whenever we, uh, we create an instance, it will be created once per user and shared across all the requests. A transient scope, transient service means that whenever you ask for the instance or the object, it always returns a new fresh instance. We'll be using here the singleton. Okay, so now the next step would be to build the service provider. Build service provider. And the second part will be to get the salary calculator um, service. For example, we tell him that the salary calculator when we get it from the service provider that get service the So here it will resolve the dependency and will make the implementation of the salary calculator promoted. So here, for example, um, the class employee will use the salary calculator, which means it will go and resolve the dependencies, which will mean that it will use the salary calculator promoted, and then it will use its method of calculation of the get salary and then, so, here, if I run the code, I'll get the static salary number. Okay, so, here's an introduction of the inversion of control and the dependency injection in the .NET Core. In the next videos, we'll see how we can use it in the entity framework. So if you have any questions, please comment them down below in the video. Thanks.